Oh, hey. Hey. I'm here, and so are you. Uh, what? Huh? Water. I've been drinking water like a bandit. I have no idea. I've been drinking water like a bandit. I have the end of my um, organic antioxidant force. I can get some more. I'm at the end of it. What's significant about this is because, you know, it has the pomegranate in it. Pomegranate is very good for you. Right? Uh, tart cherry, uh, red grape. Here it is. Here is. This is the ingredient that I'm going to. I'm, I'm hooked on this juice now. I'm hooked on it, but I don't, I'm not a, I'm not an addict. I mean, you know, it's still very rare, but I'm just saying this is my favorite juice these days. Purple carrot. I ain't never heard of it. I mean, you know, I've seen, um, like in, in, um, uh, in, 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 um, well, I do know purple carrot. No, no, no. Uh, in Alice, where, where I live, there's a place called Hogsback. Well, the Rosses go up there because they have certain herbs. They have certain stuff that they don't get no place else, whatever it is. And one of them is like a, some of strange, all kinds of carrots. So I think they have purple carrot, but I have to check. Cranberry, blueberry, but anyway, 100% juice. So I'm at the end of it. So, hey, there you go. Ain't that nice. Perfecto. Okay, so um, a friend of mine, well, Nelson. You know, I talk to Nelson almost every day because he, when I'm when I'm in South Africa, he's he's the guy that says no sort of cultural things. We answer back that. But now that I'm here, you know, we can talk on the phone, stuff like that. Actually, I'll tell you some other time when I get to it, working on something with him. Um, in fact, he just sent me a um, a program we did on Betty Davis. You know, the, but Betty Davis, I'm sorry to say, you know, Miles is one of them, the wife of two years, whatever. You know, when I'm in luck, I just might get hooked up. No, anyway, he sent it to me, the, the program we did. And I haven't heard it yet because I'm waiting to get to train, you know, because we don't get no Wi Fi, but it was, you know, da, 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 da. so I can't to reception. So I can just play it on the phone, just listen for like, I think it was a two hour special, wherever it was. So I have to do that. But he was talking, somehow, all I know what it was uh, Spike Lee's uh, latest film. The Five Bloods uh, is on, on Netflix, something like that. I started to watch it the other day, but I, 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 I got halfway through it. I went to sleep, but uh, whatever. It is, whatever. Anyway, so my sister, I'm waiting for my sister. We're going to sit together. Whatever. You know, Spike is Spike, right? And it's a regular. I'm not going. I'm not going to say anything about Five Bloods right now. But there's this whole thing, Spike Lee film, right? So I said, "What's your favorite Spike Lee film?" I said, "Okay, first of all, we're going to take Do the Right Thing and X out. That's like." You forget Spike Lee film. I like did some of the best film of all time. I know the Spike Lee films. Is Do the Right Thing and you know Malcolm X. Okay, so we're gonna put that in. Aside from that, that's your favorite Spike Lee films. Now I personally like uh friends, I personally like um uh I have a copy of it. I have a person like Bamboozle. I like Bamboozle. Sorry, you know what I mean? That's the one with uh Damon Wayans, I think it's Damon, whatever the boy, Wayne's boy, but Savion Glover, you know. He is in it, and Tommy Davidson. Uh, but I saw, in fact, last time I was in New York, I saw Savion Glover. He had a concert, he had a dance concert at Joyce Theater, you know, as I was there. So I, hey, that's last year. Anyway, but I said, my favorite Spike Lee movie is School Days. And he said, yes, yes, yes. And then I found this, because I'm here, and I got a lot of stuff here. School Days. See, School Days, the postcard that was sent to me. School Days, see? Yeah, right there, see? This is Giancarlo Esposito. I saw him on when he was like young. I saw him as well. That play by what's his name? Oh man, what's his name? Oh man, man, I saw it at the. Ah, he's like I don't know, 13, 14 years old when he did that play. It was, it was on. It was a Broadway, off Broadway, off Broadway play. Uh, by the, the the play by ah oh, man, I'm the brother. Ah yeah 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 yeah. The one that did the Brownsville raid. The same but Okay, sorry, I can't remember. Anyway, Giancarlo. But look, somebody. It's a postcard, actually. And somebody sent me a postcard. Oh, so let's read the postcard, see what it says. Then we'll get back to the filming. Let's take out the glasses. I don't have my reading glasses. I'm stuck in South Africa. I'm stuck here because they won't let me back in South Africa because of the pandemic. And they have my reading glasses down there. And, I can, and the VA is closed, so they can't send me no new reading glasses. I don't know what's going to happen. Anyway, uh, school day is uh, Gamma Phi Gamma uh, Dog or Die, Spike Lee, or Dog or Die. Anyway, if you you had to sort of, if you know HBCUs, 
Now, I went to a place called Livingston College, part of Rutgers University. But think of it, Livingston College like this, as an HBCU right in the middle of an Ivy League college. That's what Livingston College is. Okay, anyway, we had fraternities and we had all the you know, playing spades. Oh, everything that black thing is. Did they, I had two. I had two uh, roving poetry groups. You know, traveling poetry groups. You know, we did stuff. Here, here we go. Let me read what it said here. Dear Anthony Sloan, I just wanted to let you know that it's a script, so I can't. It's going to be difficult for me to read. I just wanted to let you know that the program you did on eight nine doesn't have the year. Now, see, School Days came out in 88, early 88, so this must be about 88, maybe 80, maybe it's 80, no, no, 88, something like that, because the postcode, anyway, so, so, so it's late 80s, right? Um, um, uh, 89, on uh, uh, which our reading at the gas station was part. In other words, there's a place called a gas station um, uh, down the lower east side, and uh, because of, I, did, I wasn't very into, I'm, I'm a programmer at WPA, I, engineer program, a bunch of other stuff. And so, you know, I would gather po I would gather poetry from around the city and do programs on it. It's just a little skew here. Anyway, um, what happened was, I mean, I would be all over the place, especially uh, the, the St. Mark's, the Bowery, the, that St. Mark's theater there. There was like, there was like three, there was like three cats um, that would gather poetry, um, specific poetry, and, and what people would trust. It was John Fiss, uh, Dave Nolan, and myself. Ta-da! We the three guys gathered a lot of poetry, and we did a lot of pro programs. Anyway, back to the point. Yes, and you, uh, pass. Was seriously terrific. Hey, seriously terrific. Hmm. Uh, interesting, intelligently put together, etc. Bravo! At the X-Base point. I, uh, I don't know your usual format, but you may be interested in the works of my daughters and other young, uh, and, and, and um, you know, brackets black. Now, what does this say? Co community, co committed or committed uh, m movers or something? Like, something I can't read that. Thanks for a good show, Bess Hattie Jones. And it's telling me, B A I. Uh, so, <laughs> Hattie Jones, she, I guess she's like, you know, putting for, for, for her daughter. Her daughter that's, that would be Lisa. And uh, Lisa and I think Kelly had two daughters and a son. I know, I know the son and the daughter they, they, they did it took on Malcolm X. They did it uh, in opera on Malcolm X. Oh, oh Hattie Jones, you don't know who Hattie Jones is. Hattie Jones is um, uh, Amir Baraka's first wife, the, I guess the, the mother of, of Lisa Jones or whatever have you. Um, Amir Baraka, you know, his, his, his name before he went up to the Black Arts Movement uptown. We was hanging around the village with all those folks, you know, with, with the Ginsburg and all the rest of that stuff, uh, um, was uh, uh, Leroy Jones. So this is me about Leroy Jones, my first wife. It's my sister coming in. They're gonna be loud, they're loud, because they're black, they're loud. Okay. Uh, so that's nice. But see, school days. Okay, now that leads to something else. Sorry about that. So I would, um, there was a thing put out um, it says, um, uh, these films, ex oh, these films explore black lives impact by white authority. They have a list of films, right? So the film they have is, a uh, Queen and Slim. I, I didn't see that film, right? but I don't like that actor. So I'm, he's not a good actor. So I'm, so I don't want to see that. Uh, Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song. Ah, Sweet Sweetback. This is interesting. Just a second. Let me try to quell. This is going to be difficult. Black women are talking. Watch this. Hold on a second. This is going to be interesting. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, sisters. Uh, can we just slow it down? I'm trying to record, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. I think they're going to cooperate. Okay. I think. But, you know. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is interesting. Switch right back and back. So now here, look, I know it's classic. I know they claim it's the first, I don't know, but, well, but you know, black exploitation, whatever it is. You know what I mean? But if you really look at the film, it's not a very good film. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's great for what it is. I mean, it's all kinds of stuff. Ever. But what made it what made it significant, and I saw it when it first came out. In fact, I saw it up on Fordham. That Fordham Road, the, 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 I think it was the RKO, the Lowe's, whatever, that big, you know, 46, um, um, Fordham Road. In fact, 
uh, that's what Eric, my, my, my son Eric was born. Me and Eric and his mother, we we, we went this. He was a baby, but he's always like cool, quiet. Man. He's, he wasn't quiet. He was quiet in the movie. We sat because I'm a, I was a film addict. I had to see film. Anyway, but what really made it is, of course, the Black Panther Party. Uh, so and they did get this incredible uh, evaluation of it, which is very true. And they made basically they made all the Black Panther Party go see this film, and that means everybody went. Then, then of course they got a ground so if I see it, so you know, pop, you can you can you can do you know popular culture if you will. Anyway, but I digress. Uh, 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 do the right thing. They get there. Listen, deal. Serpico. Serpico. Hey, if you want to really know what's happening with the police department, Serpico, I don't know when that was just the 80s. I don't know when it was 90s. I don't know when it was Serpico a long time ago. Al Pacino, Serpico, check that film out. Uh, Boys in the Hood, uh, significant film, you know. Uh, Selma, I didn't, uh, uh, I didn't do Selma. I don't, I don't know that that happened. And Rosewood. Um, unfortunately, I actually didn't, I didn't see I didn't see Rosewood, and I should. I don't know why I didn't see. I'll get it to it sometime. Oh, they have Harry there too. I didn't see that either, so I can't comment on that. Um, but here it is. Let me go back somehow. Let me go back and say one thing. The uh, 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 when they say like "Sweet Sweet Bad Badass Song" was the first, you know, really da 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 da, and they had all the elements, you know, the 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 music, Earth Wind the Fire, you know, the music, the Earth Wind the Fire when Jessica Cleves was in the group. Oh my God, you know, the But they had that, they had all the elements, a political, you know, da 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 all that stuff was there. But there was a film that came out right before, before Sweet Sweetback's Bad Ass Song, that I think is really a, a black exploitation film. Just need the music. Anyway, and it is a film by a white guy. Sorry. I guess that disqualified because no, the black exploitation films uh, have have white directors in it. By a white guy, and it's a film I really I will I will I'm gonna beg I, if I ever get a chance I'm a well, let me just switch it. It's called Putney Swope. Putney Swope. I'm not gonna tell you what it's about, but I will tell you this. Please, if anybody knows, okay, let me put. It was film. It was made by Robert Downey. A prince. That's what's the thing. Robert Downey is the father of yes, Robert Downey Jr. Okay. Now, if this film was ever remade, Samuel L. Jackson is the perfect. I mean, perfect person to play Putney Swope. Mm -hmm. Okay. This guy Arnold Johnson played in the thing, but don't worry about that part. Now, here's my here's the plot. If you know Robert Downey Jr. or if you know Samuel, since they know each other, they say. I'm so Robert, Robert. I think I what am I talking about? Robert Downey is probably he's still alive. I guess he's still alive. Please, somebody do something. I just <sighs> petition. I'm, I I don't know how you're going to do it. But, but have Samuel uh, get Bobby Robert whatever Junior, and they all go to Robert Senior and say, "Yo, man, this is this is necessary. You got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it." <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I know Putney Swope because I, I was actually an extra in the movie. But don't worry about that part. Okay, so that's good. Now, but to me, the most important uh, black film, a film on black theme. I don't know how he's Look, well, let me put it this way. The most, let me go, let me go back. I'm sorry, I, I jump around. Don't worry about it. There's this whole thing around they want to ban things. You know, they want to do things. You know, the, they want to what, what, go on with the wind and stuff like that. People are stupid. Do not... Do stuff like that just for, to accommodate who Pe the people who the people who want that band probably never seen the film. Okay, maybe they did the same film because it's been a long time. But let me give you um, let me uh, this is uh, let me put it this way. Uh, I have another view on this, as Kenny uh, Kurtland would say. Kenny Kurtland was uh, the keyboardist for the the, the Sting group to bring on that Sting's jazz group. You know, and they say he said, "I have a different view on this." You know, and I have a different view on this. Say for instance, okay, what's the most hated whatever band that did, did everything? Okay, Birth of a Nation. Okay, say you want a band person, and not 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 the not the recent one, but the the D. W. Griffin one, the one that, the one that they led into the, the first film played in the White House. You know, Calvin Coolidge, the you know the the racist, all that stuff. Oh, I shouldn't call him racist. He didn't call himself a racist. You know, the Prince and guy racist. The yeah, the one that separated the the one that started the whole the whole mess. It wasn't just the, the film was catalyzed that. Okay, great. So you want to ban that film? Well, first of all, most people, our people haven't seen it. I'm talking the whole film around, yeah. But it comes from what a book called The Klansman. So you have to, you gotta ban the source. So okay, say so you want to ban the book, The Klansman. 
You're going to ban books? That's like burning books. Oh, now listen, what's, what, what group burn books? Let's live. <gasps> what? You mean you want to be like the Nazis? Burning stuff? Banning stuff? What does this mean? I don't know. Remember, the modern day, people don't read books. You know, the modern day is to, is to watch, watch the film. That is your book. <laughs> You're going to ban a book because, because, you, you, because your butt hurt about something? Come on, man. What are you talking about? You can't ban stuff. What you do, if that's, if that's something that powerful, then you got to find something to outpower that thing. And guess what? Let me, in fact, Birth of Nation is the perfect film. Raise your hand as you know the film. If you have seen the film, it's over three hours long. Intolerance. Raise your hand. If you have seen the film, Intolerance. If you know what I'm talking about, raise your hand. I, if you see the film Intolerance, and because you you want you want to see a better film than Burford, it actually has better technique. Da da da. Why? And it's, it was made, film, directed by the same guy, D. W. Griffith. Because he had so much stuff about the film, you know, he went and made another film right behind it called Intolerance. It's an amazing film. It's better than Birth of the Nation, technically and everything like that. I can't believe you. You guys are idiots. You don't burn. You don't ban stuff. You're going to make somebody, um, uh, uh, <coughs> I'm upset. Ban and I'm upset. You ban anything, I'm upset. If you, you're not even in the arts, then you're going to ban stuff? What is the matter with these people? Look, the aunt of mine and the Uncle Beth, I understand, but you know, that you evolve that. You see me? You, remember we had all, all, the, all, the, all kinds of figurines and stuff like that, but they just, okay, we put it aside and we just, you know, update it. You know, we try to, I don't know, I'm not going to get it to that point. But the film, the one film, I think is unbelievable. It's the best film, I'm supposed to say, the most accessible film I've ever seen on Revolution um, from, from uh, uh, um, let's call it an ADOS perspective, perspective or a black perspective, a black American perspective. The only film I've ever seen. Now, what's happening these days is about fear, right? People off. What's, what's really happening is, I want to say, I have to say this, white people and others are finally understanding that they've been controlled by fear. And that fear, and they keep on trying to, they, they, they use that fear always to control black people. And the rest of it. But black people never go for it. Bring your fear. We eat fear for, for breakfast, for lunch. Let me go back. Brunch even. <laughs> and you white people are finally get, getting the fear of, 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 of brutality in your face. And you can't take it. Of course you can't take it. You know? Anyway. And what, what really they're, they're, what really white people or these white supremacists, whatever you want to call these people, that they, they keep on just, whatever. What they really fear is that for all these you know, centuries or hundreds of years, I don't know, whatever it is, that they've been doing stuff to black folk. And I'm saying black folk now. I'm leaving all these other people. I'm tired of these other people. So specifically about black folk. Is that black folks, if they get in power, they will do unto them what was done unto us. That kind of, you know what I'm saying? In other words, they think that, oh, when black people in power and all the stuff that put you know all this killing or whatever we done, then they're gonna do it to us. That's what they feel. Okay, this film addresses that. Are you ready for it? I'll give you some more hints. It was written by a white woman. All well, the source material is a white woman. She's English. It was directed by a white man. What? You're going to tell me, I'm not talking about Bernie either, just because you're, you know, you're going to tell me that a white director took a source material from a white woman, you know, white women these days, they, they're the ones that be, you know, phone lynching people, you know, and did a black revolutionary film? No way. No, you got to be kidding me. And it came out in the early 60s. Ah, well, I'm, you mean even before the 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 you know the black revolutionary movement, even before you know the black arts movement, and it, what even before all these black exploitation films? What? No, you gotta be kidding! Get out of here, brother! You, you out of your mind? 
the film is Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. The Birds. I gotta get the Centurion must have a copy. I gotta get I gotta get a copy of that. The Birds by Alfred Hitchcock is the most accessible film on Black Revolution ever made. I said accessible. That's a little. I mean, how come on, brother? Well, check it out. What's the first thing we see? This white woman. This white woman is in this you know shop, pet shop, or whatever. It is, and what she's getting these two lovebirds. In a cage, did the white woman part, right? In a cage. The white man comes in and trying to wrap to whatever. But she's gonna take these cage to lovebirds in a cage. Let's make like the lovebirds of black people in cage, okay? And then you know they're gonna take she's gonna take it over to this island or whatever have you, whatever, whatever. And so they they, they get on the they get on the little launch, you know, and they and the birds start attacking. These are not the blood birds, and these are other kind of birds t- talking, right? And let's, you, you know what the story then kills them, and basically the birds be beating up on people because because basically have an island. Let's call that island Africa. I don't know, I'm just throwing something out there, right? Africa is a continent, but let's make it a landmass, right? They're going to a landmass that's water that's water locked, you know? Okay. And what happens? Those birds, they burning, um, they don't loot, they burning, destroying, you know, and basically you white people, what to do, you got to do, but here, and even killing some of them white people, okay, no, no, no. I don't ever can't kill them, stop, 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 so that's the movie, but what happens at the end, think about it, what happens at the end, just, and when everything's cool, they said the birds find you, you're not a threat anymore, you let the, the, the I guess they let the love birds go, I can't look at the movie again, but they free their, they free their peoples, you know, and so what happens, they're going, the, the, what happens? The birds, all the birds, they let the white people go, including the one that started the whole thing. Oh, I should have got her. Anyway, they let them go off the island. You're gone. Leave us alone in peace. Done. That, my fine feathered folks, is the best film on Black Revolution or the accessible, most accessible film on Black Revolution ever made. I stand by what I say. I being me, T. Flynn Patterson, taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I definitely suspect.